Hi, my name is Django. I'm from Cape Town, South Africa, and I use Reaper for a multitude of tasks, including electronic music production and audio post. Focusing on music today, we're going to try and sequence a beat using audio items in a fresh installation of Reaper with all its default settings. And then I'm going to show you some of my favorite preferences, actions, and mouse modifiers for improving and streamlining the process. In part two, we'll also have a look at my main Reaper installation and my project template. So right now we're looking at a fresh installation of Reaper. The only things I've done are scan my VST folders, which took a while. I've also undocked the mixer so that it's in its own window. I've made it full screen and I've right clicked in a blank space and said disallow multiple rows. I'd like it to be sort of a big mixer rather than crammed into the dock, especially as I sometimes use a laptop. I've also docked the Media Explorer and Track Manager. I'd like to be able to show and hide tracks that I'm not using. The last thing I've done in this fresh installation is I've given key commands to the actions for snapping. In the action list, you'll find grid set to one. This means a bar. I've also set shortcuts for quarter note, eighth note, sixteenth note, triplets. And then I've got one that says set to four, which is four bars for when I'm working on bigger arrangement sections. And I've also got one which is frame grid toggle on and off for when I'm working on video. So when we try and create a beat in a fresh installation of Reaper, we do come across a couple of problems. When I click at a sample in the browser, it draws the waveform and creates a repeaks file in that samples folder, which I don't like. The next issue is when I load the sample, it creates fade ins, taking away some of the punch. Next, there are two actions I really like. There are copy selected area of items and duplicate selected area of items. Basically, it only duplicates the items that you've selected and only the parts of items selected within your time selection. And it copies that whole time division that you've selected as well. So you can easily create rhythmical or non-rhythmical effects if you turn snap off. Using the copy command, you can also copy little segments of a sound. It's handy if you've got snap off and you're doing dialogue editing, for example. What would make this feature really shine is if we could marquee select and time select at once. And we can. So we'll be checking out how to configure that shortly. The next problem we face using Reaper in its default state is when I want to replace a sound. Let's imagine that this kick was long and you can see it's looping. But if I replace it with a shorter sound, you can see it also loops. And the looping isn't a consistent length. It's not something we would want because we're working with drums. Personally, I never use looping, so I actually turn this off completely. I'll show you that in a second. The final issue that I personally have is zooming in. It zooms by default to the playback or edit cursor, whereas I prefer to zoom in where I'm looking, which will be wherever my mouse is. So let's have a look at the preferences and fix all these issues we've discovered. First, under paths, here is where I've set a path for the repeaks so that they all go to a dedicated folder rather than the folder of the sound I'm previewing. I don't need to see them scattered throughout my machine. Next, under project, then media item defaults, I turn off fade ins and outs so that we retain the attack on our drums. Then here's where you turn off all the looping options. Next, we go to editing behavior and I like to unlink the time and loop selection. So if I quickly hit apply, once I've turned this off, you'll see that I can select time and the loop point doesn't follow. Because if I'm working on a four bar loop, I'd rather hear the four bar loop. I don't want to be moving my loop point every time I duplicate something because that selection is my basis for editing, basically. So if it's a personal preference, I like to have that off. What I do if I want to move my loop point to the time selection, I've created a macro using these options here. Next, back to the editing behavior, I also like to have tab through MIDI notes on. 
I'll show you why later. It relates to creating a MIDI guide for when I'm laying down drums that are offbeat. Editing behavior is also where we change this zoom preference. I like to have it to my mouse cursor. Same for the vertical position. Next, under media, I like it to copy imported media items to the project directory. I like to have this on as default. All my samples, wherever they come from, can go straight into the project folder. If I drag something in off a of flash, it'll copy that. It just avoids me worrying that files got left behind, because from time to time it used to happen. Project files will be a bit bigger, but for the most part, if I'm programming a track, there's not going to be a hell of a lot. Next, let's go to mouse modifiers. Now, I want to change how, when I right click at marquees, I would actually prefer it to marquee and do a time selection in one move. So that's under the arrange view. Right drag, marquee, select items, and time. Now, when you use this, you'll be able to immediately select exactly the sounds you want to duplicate using selected area of items. All the sounds that are not selected when you marquee select will not be duplicated. So this is super handy if you want to duplicate just the drums or just the keys or certain instruments in a song and you don't have to worry about deleting stuff or working subtractively. You can just select the things you want and duplicate them. If you want to duplicate everything within your area selection, I have a keyboard shortcut for the action select all items in current time selection. Let's create a bit of a beat now that we've got our settings right. You'll see that when I duplicate sound, I just have to right click drag it, select the area and the sounds, and I can very quickly start to duplicate things in whatever rhythmic form I want. More like Ableton or Pro Tools. Next, let's have a look at creating a guide. Let's say we want to create some offbeat hi-hats. We want a little bit of swing, but not as much as a triplet grid. So what I can do, since there's no swing in the main range window, sadly, there is at least a shuffle setting, a swing setting in the MIDI editor. So I set the grid to eighths. I create a new track, insert a new blank MIDI item, open it up, and set the grid swing to a value that I want. Within the eighth note, we can have two sixteenth notes, and you can see that the second one is moving when we change the swing value. So let's put it at about 25, and insert a note on that offbeat. So let's close this. Now what I can do is I can hit tab, and it jumps to that MIDI note, because we set that preference earlier. Now I'm able to use this as a visual guide and also a literal one, because if you right click the snap button, you'll see this setting here, snap to items on other tracks within 10 nearby tracks. I like to set this to one, because if I'm duplicating MIDI items that are nowhere near my guide, I'd rather they stuck to bars, for example. So I'd rather have to move the guide around, I don't really mind. Just gonna add some hi-hats in. Seems like the guide needs to be inside the group for some reason. And now it's working. And then I can also save the guide as a template once I'm happy with it. And when we're saving, we must make sure we tick include items. Cool, that's all for today. Tune in next time when I'll show you my project template and how to create a MIDI track for virtual instruments. Thanks for watching. Cheers.